Welcome everybody. I'm Michael Hoppanimi with the Ranch Office. Hi everyone. My name is Shermaine Kennedy. And so Shermaine, why don't you tell us uh, the goal of today's uh, video and podcast? Well, first of all, thank you, Michael, for letting me come in and do the podcast with you. But, you know, I just want to address some things that um, it's uh, very difficult for a lot of people to touch uh, or discuss or even actually um, talk about at all, which is uh, suicide awareness and uh, prevention. And not only that, but just mental illness. I think that uh, a lot of people are just really scared to even touch it. Yeah, it's a, t it's a tough subject to talk about to listen to and especially if you are involved in, in that kind of world to kind of open up about your past experiences and it sounds like you know based on uh, some things that you've shared with me that um, you've kind of set out to go about being an advocate and, and spread awareness about certain things make cer sure certain things are understood correctly by everybody um, why don't you tell us a little bit more about that Absolutely. Uh, in April of 2015, I left to bring my kids to school and came home and found my fiance dead in the backyard, which is um, brutal. And it sounds brutal, but that's just the way it was. Yeah. Yeah. And so from that, you know, uh, just the struggle to rebuild and uh, just get through the next couple of years was very, very difficult. So I think I'm at a point now where I can discuss and help other people that have gone through or might be facing or need to know information on how to prevent or to even just discuss um, ways that uh, you would handle someone in that situation. Yeah. Um, or condition, I should say. So let's say that there are you know, other people that have been going through and recovering from something similar to you, you know, what would you be able to say as like a, a takeaway from your recovery process? Um, you know, how, how do you move on from something like that? And what, what was your experience kind of in the, uh, the post event um, kind of like, how, how could you help other people who are struggling with uh, dealing with that kind of stuff? Well, anytime, <laughs> anyone goes through anything like that it's such a shock to your system so you just don't feel right you feel so many different emotions you feel physically different um, obviously you you don't think straight you feel like I felt like someone had taken uh, symbols and you know bang them on you know each side of my head or ears my ears would ring <clears throat> it was hard to focus it was hard to even think straight so first I would say if, uh, if anyone is having to deal with uh, suicide um, loss or if a loved one to suicide uh, that's very close, um, whether it's a fiance or a son or you know, a loved one, a best friend, um, I'd say just stay really close to the family and the family members that are close to the person suffering from it. I would definitely encourage them to keep them at arm's length but don't let them go too far. I think a lot of times there are really bad decisions made right after um, such a tragic accident, accident like suicide. Right. And how would you say for, let's say, the, the, the family, the friends, how is it, um, how can someone best be there for somebody else during that, that time uh, to, to help to, to be there for that person? I would just say let them know that you're there. Just having someone in a, the, a room next to you is comforting, um, even yeah. if you don't want to be around anyone. Just knowing that a body is there, knowing that they're you know somewhat close if you're need, in, in need of anything. I mean, to the to the point of you know I would say as as drastic actions as you know driving them around, right? Um, helping them make decisions, uh, allowing them to talk about what they're going through, talk about their emotions without being fearful of not knowing what to say or how to respond. Just, just the freedom to, to speak is uh, the first part of you know, a recovery, even that, that soon after a suicide, but just letting someone know that you're there without too much pressure or hovering over the person to make them feel like you know, uh, they're just automatically different. Right, yeah. Um. You've also talked about um, a stigma that you you said people who have um, experienced tragedy like this will will face. Can you talk more about what that 
is like, how that has affected you, and uh, how you want to basically clear it, it up for everybody out there who doesn't understand. Sure. Um, you know, it's unfortunate, but I don't know if it's something that the person like myself was going through or if, you know, a lot of times people just don't know what to say. Everyone's still in shock. Um, it is such a shock when someone takes their life. Uh, nobody, there's just n really no words that are comforting. So sometimes people either stay away. Um, after a period of time, you know, there's always people who want to want, want something to talk about, and that's right. pretty interesting, whether it's in their workspace or just um, at the local bar. But, you know, a lot of times people just automatically stop talking when you come around, so you feel like, oh, they're talking about you. Or uh, sometimes people don't know what to say at all, and they don't want to talk to you or can't talk to you. Right. Uh, whereas before they were friends and it was always great to see them or they were happy to see you and, and now this has happened and it, the, the relationship hasn't, you know, it's not gone. It's just not the way it was. Right. So it's very difficult to, um, to help other people understand that it's okay to uh, not be afraid to approach the person and definitely don't, uh, you know, run away because you do feel like all of a sudden even though you didn't do anything wrong or I didn't do anything wrong, you feel like you're responsible in some fashion. Right. Um, especially when it's that close to home. So that, that can, you can see how that might make it hard for people to want to open up about it uh, when meeting, you know, new coworkers, new friends, new people, um, and uh, potentially, you know, new relationships. So how would you suggest, um, or would you suggest at all, to, to be expressive of that kind of stuff uh, early on. What has what your experience been with that? And um. That's a good question. Uh, you know, it's not something that anybody wants to discuss, really. I mean, because it's just such a devastating, you know, thing that when someone, you know, I feel like, you know, innately we are uh, made to, to fight for our lives and want to live. So when that happens, you know, people are just, it's just such an unusual feeling. Um, as far as friends go, you know, typically if I'm meeting new people in the workspace, I keep everything business-like until you reach a level of, of comfort. And if they start asking, then you can, ex you know, start talking about it. Uh, typically I wouldn't, but if I were to date someone, I felt, uh, in several occasions, I felt very responsible to let them know that something that I had gone through. Um, and I almost feel like if I didn't, then I would have been keeping something almost lying because it's a difficult situation to deal with. You know, right. it's something that I will always have to deal with. I don't think it's going to affect me in, in a horrible way uh, in every relationship, but I think um, some people think that it will. Yeah. Are there things that people misunderstand? Um, anything that you want to set straight, so to speak, as far as, um, you know, how people may perceive somebody who's gone through this tragedy, um, what it's like recovering from this. I, I know your whole goal is to kind of raise awareness for, um, uh, you know, that it's, that, that, that life, you know, ca can go on. And, and I know you have some goals for helping these people. So I'm just curious as to um, what is your kind of main goal if you could reach people? Um, what would you, what would be your message? Well, I feel a lot of times we're labeled, and I don't like the label that comes with being a suicide victim or a suicide survivor. I don't feel like I'm either one. I'm just someone that experienced something very tragic. Um, I'd say a, as a message to reach out and talk. You know, there's a, a hotline suicide number. There's, you know, people that are there to talk. But, you know, ultimately, I don't think when people are um, thinking about taking their lives, they're in their right mind. I just don't think it's possible. However, if they, uh, if they, if you are and you're listening, then I would say, you know, think about your, your mom or your dad or your brother or your sister or your loved one or someone who loves you or your girlfriend and think about how long it might take for them to recover from you taking your life. When you think you might be doing someone a favor, uh, it, you're really not. It takes a long time. The recovery is still uh, very real for me. Um, however, with time, it's gotten easier um, with, with time and a lot of uh, self-help, you know, right. um, trauma counseling, 
um, just wanting to feel better, you know, uh, wanting to get back into work mode, wanting to get back into the exercise, feel good yeah. again. Um, I just say, reach out, talk, don't be scared. You know, mental illness is not one who flew over the cuckoo's nest. You know, right. you're not some crazy person. And by the way, what is crazy? What looks crazy? You know, what we put crazy on isn't crazy, you know? Yeah. And, um, it's a real thing and people are just so, I'm just surprised that people are so scared to discuss it, you know, um, because of how people might make them feel or if they're fearful of losing their job or, you know, but, um, there are specialists and there are people who uh, really understand the disease and the illness and are there to, to help. I'd say just, you know, persevere. Yeah. So I know that you've kind of taken it upon yourself to implement what's helped you into your career now. So why don't you tell us more about what you're doing, you know, with um, your, your career? Um, well, I was a chef for over 20 years, a nutritional chef. I cooked for a lot of professional athletes and then started after I shut my business down, went into sales. Sure. And then all of this happened. I've kind of skipped around uh, to kind of just find my niche again. And I think I found myself in CBD, you know, okay. CBD oil. Uh, when I started taking or when I was introduced to it, uh, someone approached me and said, this is helping people uh, with suicide tendencies or depression or anxiety. I'm like, wow, okay, sign me up. I just wanted to, whatever I could do to help or even help myself. So um, without even thinking anything about it, I started using it and it was amazing how much I was still suffering without realizing it until the, uh, the weight of depression or anxiety was lifted. And it's not that I don't have to uh, deal with it, it's just easier to deal with more of a you know, clear mind. Um, I have, you know, uh, it, it it has made me feel like my old self again, yeah. which, you know, if that's possible, I'm not sure. But it's just really helped me uh, feel, uh, feel good again and yeah. want to help other people and uh, educate people on it. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been very good so far. Yeah. I, I was a nutritional chef the last 10 years of my career uh, with cooking. And so this kind of plays into that where you know now I can make people feel good on the inside and, yeah. and in more ways than one with food and CBD oil yeah. it really helps we're gonna have to get you to uh, cook some stuff over here at the ranch so I would love to it'd be great we'll do a cooking show yeah next episode guys cooking yep. show All right. anyways well thank you guys for watching um, if you want to reach out to Shermaine uh, we'll put the contact info in the description um, and thank you for watching uh, the ranch office vlog well,